Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Drive In Worship at Northminster Presbyterian Church. This is quite to be quite a wonderful habit we have. It's so good to see all the cars out here, to kind of see you uh, when you're there, to say hi to those people who are worshiping at home. I know a number of people are. Uh, if you're looping here, of course, remember you can tune your cars to 88.3. We're streaming the restrooms are open over here. Just a reminder, I see people talking and visiting. Just make sure you practice all of our, our, our careful bits, all of our CDC recommended mask wearing and social distancing even when you're visiting with one another so that we can protect each other. Uh, our, we're having one more wonderful Wacky Wednesday. We decided to do a bonus. We're calling it more games and more crafts, and that will be this Wednesday from 9 to 3. And then that afternoon, we're getting our youth group together to uh, have movie and a pizza. So uh, if you are in middle school and high school, join us at 4 o'clock in uh, the gymnasium, bring, I mean in the Geneva room, bring your own beach chair. We're going to sit around and uh, watch a movie, or three distance with masks on, and uh, talk about it and have some pizza together before uh, we take the break for August. Uh, no cost. Yes. And um, tonight we are at the warming shelter again. Uh, if you are able to bring some food to share, bring it to the church here. Uh, between 3.30 and 5, and we will deliver it and uh, make sure they're taken care of. Also, next week we're at the shelter. Um, I was looking at these olive trees, and once we trim the trees on the street, we can see a lot of dead branches up here. So if anybody has an inexpensive tree guy that they like to use, let me know so we can have somebody come in here, uh, clean up some of these dead branches, and all of a sudden we can see, see how the green trees are gone behind it. Um, Jackie didn't want to come up here and make her announcement this morning because she's not wearing purple. And she can only make real eggs that, uh, real eggs, well, it's not purple though, it's just your hat. <laughs> she wanted me to announce that, um, we're doing our usual real egg potato, baked potato fundraiser. Uh, but we're having trouble getting a hold of donated potatoes. So if you are able to make a monetary donation for purchase of really big potatoes that we can sell for our real egg fundraiser, uh, in bulk quantities, let Jackie know, and she will she will talk to you about that. She also has available for sale Relay for Life Luminaries. Uh, those are ten dollars, right, Jackie? And um, forms for you to fill out if you're a survivor, so that we can get you on that list. And then I have one more announcement today. I don't think they're here. Gladys and Glendale Cap are celebrating their 75th wedding anniversary next Sunday. And we can't have a party. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do if you can do this. And this is right up Jim's alley. Bring a card for them. Find, bring it next week. We'll give them to Larry. Larry will take them over to the house next week so they can celebrate their birthday. I'm sorry, birthday. Their, their anniversary. And know that we are all uh, celebrating with them. So put that, write that down, and uh, be sure to bring some cards next week so that we can celebrate with them. Well, we gather together each week to worship God and to be in God's presence. That's why we're here in the parking lot. So we're going to begin our time together, raising our voices with our morning time of praise. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray. Loving God, we search our hearts to see all the good. I know. All the challenges and all the obstacles in our lives. You remember the times we have turned away from you. The times we have gotten we are your beloved children. Forgive us when we do not act as your faithful followers. Remind us that we are a part of our family. May your Son, Jesus Christ, intercede in our lives, bring us grace and healing. Help us be your servant and share your story with the world. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Please hear these words of assurance. Beloved children of God, nothing in this life can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Receive the forgiveness of God and go forth to be the loving community of faith. Amen. dear friends, we have given up ourselves in praise and we've offered ourselves to God in our time and our prayer of confession. And we have been assured that we are God's forgiven and blessed children. As God's children, let us wave to one another and offer the peace of Christ. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.
Most of the time, in the first and second week of July, I get to go to Westminster to work. How many of you have been to Westminster? None of you have been to Westminster. We've got to change that. Because when I go to Westminster to work, I get to be a part of it. I go to a camp called Buccaneers. And Buccaneers, we are all pirates. And this is my trigger map. And if you can call again, if you can't go there anymore, take it back there. Yes, I know. There we go. <laughs> so here's my trigger map. And if you look at my treasure map, when they took the treasure, <laughs> they buried that treasure on the island. And then they had to draw a map, and they put an X on the map, so that they would remember where it was. They would remember where it was. We call that X marks the spot. You ever heard that saying? There's a story in the Bible that says Jesus told me. Terrible. And he said, if you heard that a man found out that there was something in the field that was a very, very valuable treasure. And so he sold everything he had and bought the field so that he could have the treasure. He says, when we, Jesus is saying, when we find out about God, when we know who Jesus is, we should give up everything we have to get that valuable, valuable treasure for Jesus. Are you guys cold? No. It's not cold. <laughs> um, he's got very, very valuable treasure that Jesus can have. So I, I want to cross the way. This cross was made for me by a staff member at another camp that I worked at in New Jersey. So which cross? Do you know? Yeah, he made it for me. He carved it and glued it together. Things happen. But if you take the cross and you turn it sideways, what's it look like? It looks like an X down there. That's a little bit too long, but see, he slipped and he drew the X. Jesus is the X that marks the spot that God says, I know you, and I love you, and I claim you, and we need to take that and say, God, that's what I want. X marks the spot. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you for giving us Jesus. Help us to give everything we have to hold him in our hands. God, yes. Thank you so much, guys. You go back to your party. is the ability to share. And I'd like to share a thought with you before I read today's psalm reading. And that was that when we discovered that we were going to be sheltering in place in March, I needed to set a goal for myself. And one of the goals I set for myself was to lose 15 pounds. And as of this morning, I have 23 pounds to go. <laughs> Please pray with me. Holy One, fill our hearts with your spirit. Open our ears to hear your word proclaimed. Remind us that you are always with us, guiding us to be your faithful disciples. Amen. Our psalm reading this morning is Psalm 128. Please listen to the word of God. Happy is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be happy, and it shall go well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord blesses you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank 
Thank you, Dana, for sharing that wonderful song. I was reading from the New Testament, it's from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 28 through 26 through 39. Listen for the word of God. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches our hearts, knows what the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ, who died, yes who was raised, and who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are all being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep being sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things yet to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, once again we come to you, indeed in our spirit filled with you. 
So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So how many of you have watched the movie Back to the Future? There's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, keep your hands up there. And do you remember this, the bad guy? This was always going up to Marty McFly, banging him on the head and saying, Hello, McFly, hello. Oh, is anyone in there? And Marty didn't get something right. Or Alicia's Lotus' favorite phrase is, Really? And somebody does something just really wrong. Here are some hello or really moments. Now, one of my favorite radio shows is the Mark Thompson show on KGO Radio between 10 and 12. And on Fridays at about 10.30, he does something he calls Friday Fabulous Florida. And he talks about things that happen in Florida that don't seem to happen anywhere else in the world. Well, some of these hello or really moments could fit into his uh, Friday Fabulous Florida. I don't know if these are all from Florida, but I can guarantee you this. These are all real. A Harris survey commissioned by United Airlines, I am not making this up, found that 38% of passengers never use the lavatory during a flight. 60% do, and another 2% aren't sure. Hello? I'm fascinated by that 2%, but I hope I never sit next to one of them on the flight. Or did you hear about somebody named Julie Sharik from Orem, Utah? She gave birth to a seven pound, five ounce son just 12 hours after learning she was pregnant. She explained, looking back, I remember that he was moving around a lot, but I just thought it was gas. Really? Or a prison inmate escaped on the 89th day of a 90 day sentence. He was captured and had to serve another one and a half years. Hello? Or a robber allowed a store clerk to make one phone call during the robbery. I am not making these up. And was flabbergasted when the police arrived on the scene. Hello? Anyone in there? A brick throwing, smash and grab thief knocks himself out. Thus discovering that the shop owner had installed plexiglass windows instead of glass. Really? Or how about this one? A few years ago, right here in California, a grandmother who was actually, I, I am not making this up, who was actually one of the original Mouseketeers sued Disneyland because after she was robbed in a Disneyland parking lot, the park security took her, took her and her grandchildren to an office where they were exposed to the site of Disney characters signing out of costumes. This caused severe emotional distress by exposing her grandchildren to the reality that Disney characters were in fact make-believe. You didn't hear that name. What? <laughs> now, I have been behind the yellow line of Disney World and seeing character, Disney characters about their heads is a little weird, but emotionally distressing. Hello. It's that hello that lets people know they somehow missed the point of the discussion and need to start over or return to Earth if they want to know what's going on. Hello. Is anyone paying attention? That's what Paul is. This Romans passage is a great collection of very memorable verses. You know, you, I, I'm sure as I was reading that, you were going, oh, I've heard that one, oh, I've heard that one. I know these. But Romans 28 is perhaps the biggest hello in the, all of the Bible. It says this, We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. How often do we forget the second part of that? We stop with, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. And we forget that who are called according to his purpose. Let me ask you this. What are some things that you worry about? What are things in your life that you go, I'm not sure about, that just keep you up at night? Is it finances? Have enough money to pay the rent? Have enough money to buy groceries to turn on the lights? Do you worry about what other people think about you? 
kind of worry that you took a bite? Do you worry about getting sick? Eh, in this day and age, we probably do. I didn't go to Joe Dunn's funeral on Friday because uh, I didn't want to be around crowds. We have a tendency, though, to make our God too small. We have a tendency not to know that God works in everything. We might pray for something little like uh, getting a good parking space at the store, but are we willing to take the big step to pray for peace in the world, to pray for peace in our nation, to pray for our vaccine to be found? Are we willing to take that big step? Hello, Paul reminds us that this is the God who called Christ the firstborn of all creation and then chooses to shape the rest of us in the image of this Christ. It is this transformative power of God, embodied by the once-for-all-time sacrifice of Christ, that refuses to let our, our lives fall prey to the clutches of evil. or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, alone, he says. Nothing can separate us from God. Not any of these things can separate us from the love of God. Because of God's amazing gift on the cross, there is nothing, nothing that we need to be afraid of, nothing that will keep us from the love of God. Listen again to Paul's truth. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things yet to come, not those in power, not height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Not coronavirus, not cancer, not unemployment, not fear, not nothing will separate us from the love of God. One scholar wrote, the highest good for humanity is to love God, to be conformed to the image of Christ, and to be loved by God. God is and always has been at work in us, seeking to conform us to or make us like Christ. And in that, we are predestined for God's love. Paul asks, if God is for us, who can be against us? It's his most basic assumption. If God was willing to sacrifice Jesus on our behalf, then there is nothing to prevent God from prevailing against any other foe. Misfortunes are not evidence that God has abandoned us. Rather, it is evidence that evil will be overcome. Do you remember the old spiritual, we shall overcome, we shall overcome one day. God's love will never fail. We will, through God's power and love, overcome all these things that beset us. You got that? Or do I need to say hello again? One of my favorite lines in all of filmdom is from the court jester starring Danny Kaye, and it was released in 1956. And this line occurs all throughout this film. They say, they say, get it, got it, good. You've seen it in other movies too, but it started in The Court Jester. When you feel worried, or you think that God is too small and can't handle that, hello, God is big. God's love will never fail. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for sending Jesus into this world to love us, to care for us. We thank you for his sacrifice, that through his life, death, and resurrection, we might know your power and live with you forever and ever. God, help us when we are in the midst of despair 
to know that you are there, that we can lean on your everlasting arms, that you will hold us, that you will keep us from falling, that we do not be afraid, for we are standing on your promises, knowing that you love us and care for us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers have masks and gloves on. If you have your gift with you this morning, please lower your windows as the ushers come near. Thank you if you have automatic payment or mailed in your offering. Your tithes and gifts allow us to do ministry here in Salinas, California. Christ reminds us that our treasures, our gifts from God, are the most beneficial when they are used for the kingdom of God. This may be the time when we may this may this is may this be the time that when we bring forth our gifts to be blessed by God. Let us pray. Almighty God, there are treasures all around us. Family, friends, your abiding presence, and the love of Jesus Christ. Bless these gifts we return to you now. Bless them that others might come to know the true treasures of your love and grace. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
Our sanctuary is so much larger. We have trouble figuring out the timing, and here comes Jackie running as fast as she can to bring me some more prayer requests. This one. This one. Aha. Well, as we move into our time of prayers, I need to uh, bring you up to date on some of our church members. Uh, one of those is Dan Toll. Dan Toll had back surgery on Wednesday. And uh, they had to keep him in the hospital a little longer. He had a, he had a leak going on in his spinal fluid. Hopefully he'll be going home in the next day or two. So please keep Dan and Karen and their family in your prayers as we go in there. Nancy Crompton had foot surgery on her left foot on uh, Thursday. She's doing quite well. She's a little bit of pain, but she says she's doing okay. And then uh, Perla Bernardis was diagnosed with covid she actually had the coronavirus, but she was never hospitalized. She says she just had a minor fever. Her fever has broken, and she's continuing to recover well at home, and her children are there taking care of her. Let us move into our time of prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for the great gifts and power that you have given to us. We thank you that you have given us the ability to come to you boldly. And God, we know that when we do not quite know what to say, you are there speaking. The Spirit is there speaking and groaning on our behalf that we might be able to share your love with everyone. Gracious God, this morning we pray for Dan's continued healing, that he'll be able to get home from the hospital soon and begin his rehab and that his back pain will be taken away by this surgery. Lord, we ask the same for Nancy, that she will continue to heal, that she'll be able to go back to doing all the things that she so loves as her foot heals. God, we thank you for Perla's mild illness, that you will continue to bless her, make her stronger, keep her healthy. And I pray for all members of our congregation and all people in our town who are facing this virus, that we'll be safe, that we will be able to, if we do get it, recover quickly. But more so, more so God, protect us from this virus. Keep it from coming upon us. Gracious God, we pray, continue to pray for Timmy, Tiffany, We've been praying for this young mother with a brain injury at, right after her birth, right after the birth of her child. She's in a coma, God, and we ask that you continue to bless her, heal her, be with her doctors as they figure out what to do to bring her healing to her brain. Be with her husband and her new baby as they figure out how, and they are worried about their beloved mother. Gracious God, I give prayers of joy for Barbara's grandson coming home safely from the Marine Corps. And Lord, we lift up all of our soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen, and Coast Guardsmen, and sailors who are out there serving us, protecting us. Keep them safe from harm. Keep them safe from illness. Bring them home safely to their families, that their families may be blessed. And we give you thanks for those who are able to come home safely. And gracious God, we pray for our entire world. There's so much violence in our world. We see it every day on TV and bigotry. God, we don't know why. I don't know why people look at someone and say, because you don't have the same skin color or you don't behave the same way, or you don't love the same way, then you're not loved by God and I'm going to hate you. God, take that out of us. Take a racism away from us. God, take the injustices that we have against those who are unable to be exactly the same, God, Give us a just world. And God, we pray for again, for the coronavirus pandemic, that you will give the scientists the ability to discover what it is we can do. And God, we know that you are able to protect and guide us in all of this that we do. So God, we, we know that you are a great big God, that you're not our little small God. God, help us to pray boldly for all of these things. We offer them to you as your people, as we raise our voices together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
dear friends, we need to stand on the promises of God. The promises that God had given to us that all things will work together for those who love God and are called to his purpose. So dear friends, when you're afraid, just remember Paul's going, hello, Jesus is there for you. Jesus will hold you in his arms. Now may the grace, mercy, and peace of God, our creator, God, our redeemer, and God, our sustainer, be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace and drive carefully.